How can you find the Ka of an acid from the pH at the equivalence point? You're going to have to know how much stuff you mixed and what you're mixing to do this. The first thing I want to do is a little basic accounting. We have some hydrocyanic acid reacting with NaOH. That's a simple neutralization. The H goes with the OH to make H2O. And the Na and the Cn are also dissolved in solution. Some people write NaCN together, that's fine. How many moles of HCN do I have to start with? Well, I have the concentration and volume of the HCN that I started with. It's 0.2 moles per liter and 0.02 liters. See how I divide by 1,000? To get 0.004 moles, which means because this is a one-to-one -one ratio, I need 0.004 moles of this. I think you'll find when you solve for volume, moles divided by concentration, you end up with 20 milliliters of the NaOH solution as well. And so, why is that important? Equivalence is when you've added just as many units of acid as you have of base. We have 0.04 moles of the acid, we have 0.04 moles of the base. Those concentrations go to zero because they neutralize each other and we end up making 0.004 moles of water, not that we care, 0.004 moles of Na+, we don't care about that either because it's the conjugate of a strong base, so it is super weak and won't affect the pH, and 0.004 moles of Cn-. Now that's the conjugate of a weak acid, so it will affect the pH, and it's going to be the only thing in our final solution after titration at equivalence that affects the pH. So let's see how that affects the pH. We are starting with Cn minus in solution. Cn minus in water does what? Well, it's a base and so it steals an H plus away from water and leaves an OH minus behind. That's the definition of what a base does. From that, you guys know KB. We're starting with the base, we use KB, not KA. And that is going to be HCN, OH minus, all over CN minus. We don't include water because it's a liquid and liquids don't appear in equilibrium expressions. Now, what we need to do is solve for Kb, because after all, that'll help us solve for Ka. If I was to do an ice table with Cn minus H, well, I wouldn't care about H2O, HCn and OH minus, I would find that I'm starting with, oh man, I don't even know. My starting concentration for Cn minus is 0.004 moles in a new total of 40 milliliters. Notice the total is 40 because we mixed 20 milliliters of HCN with 20 milliliters of NaOH. That leaves me with 0.1 moles per liter of CN minus to start. Ice table wise, CN minus, I'm ignoring water again because it doesn't even play a role in equilibrium. We're starting with 0 0.1. We're starting with none of this and none of this. We're going to lose some amount of this. We're going to gain some amount of this and this. You guys know how to do ice tables. Here we go. It's these numbers that get, end up getting plugged back into the equilibrium expression. My concentration of HCN at equilibrium is X. My concentration of OH at equilibrium is X and my concentration of Cn minus is 0.1 minus x. The only problem is we don't know what x is, and we need it to solve for Kb. This is where the pH at equivalence comes in. What you'll remember about pH is that it's the negative log of your H plus concentration, or H3O plus if you prefer. Which means that your H plus concentration is 10 to the power of negative pH. Another way you can go about doing this is finding the pOH 
and getting your OH concentration. But what I'm going to do here is get my H plus concentration by doing uh, my pH is 11.1035. I'm going to make that negative. Then I'm going to do 10 to the power of that. I end up with 7.88 times 10 to the minus 12. Now I rounded because I ran out of space. I recommend not rounding during this kind of calculation. What you'll remember is that the OH concentration at equilibrium is 10 to the negative 14 divided by that. 14's pop up all over the place. And so I need 10 to the power of negative 14 times that. I end up with 1.2691 times 10 to the minus 3. All right, here we go. I think it's time. I'll write papers over here. All right, can you guys see what I'm doing here? Yes, you can. All right, so what that means is my KB is X. Now, X is my OH minus concentration, which is why I found my OH minus concentration, 1.2691 times 10 to the negative 3 times X again, all over 0 0.1 minus whatever I got for that x. And again, I'm carrying like four decimal places because it's, gonna, it's, it's a big deal. All right, here we go. So I take that number squared and divide it by, oops, 0 0.1 minus 1.2691 times 10 to the power of negative three. And what I end up with is 1.63 times 10 to the negative 5 for my KB. Beautiful. I mean, really, they asked for KA, which is 10 to the negative 14 divided by KB. But that's no big deal. I'll just do that now. Divided by, and 1, 6.13 times 10 to the minus 10. And that's the KA for HCN. Now, Number one, I know that's right because I rigged the question and I know exactly what the Ka of HCN is. It's one of my favorite acids. But second of all, what I want to remind you is you need to do your basic accounting at the beginning to know how many, how, what volume of titrant you added. And you need to figure out how many moles of either weak acid or weak base you have left in your solution. After that, you need to do a simple ice table and fill it into either Ka or Kb depending on what you ended up with. We ended up with a weak base, so we used KB. You used the pH that they gave you to get either H plus or OH minus, depending on what appears here. And that tells you what X is, which you can then fill in and solve for whatever K you have. If you're asked for the other K, just divide it by 10 to the negative 14. It's beautiful. All right, best of luck.